So what we've got here are two skulls, a replica of a Neanderthal and a replica of an early modern skull. And we've also got two endocasts, impressions of the inside of a Neanderthal skull and an early modern human skull. So normally, in the past, we have used these endocasts to look and judge about Neanderthal brains. So these endocasts are about the same size, um, but you can't see too much information there. So instead, what we've turned to get the quality of the brains, we've turned to other features, such as the size of the eye sockets and the volume of the orbits. And we argue, based on data from, from humans and primates, that the Neanderthals had larger orbits, and this would have meant more of their brain had to be dedicated to their visual systems. Not only that, the Neanderthals were heavier bodied. And by being heavier bodied, they needed more brain power to govern that large body. So if you take out the need for a larger visual system, and you take out the need for more control of the whole body, you're left with less for the other functions, such as cognition, the so-called higher functions, like group size. So factoring that into these brains, if we can call them that, um, these endocasts show us that within the Neanderthal brain, there was less available for governing large group sizes and social complexity compared with those of modern humans.